Hi, everybody. My name is Robo Martinez. I'm a product director in King, uh, and I'm really excited today uh, to be here uh, with all of the product school community and share a bit my experience on how to go about defining platform KPIs. Before I jump into the weeds, uh, first I wanted to go about who, who am I? Um, my background is in telecommunications engineering and electronics engineering. Uh, after that, I spent some time uh, as a developer, uh, very short because I quickly realized it was not what I uh, liked uh, to be doing uh, for the rest of my career. I spent some time later uh, on research in uh, studying uh, ECG signals. Uh, after that, uh, I moved into an auditing company in PwC. Uh, I was doing uh, auditing on mainly financial audit, uh, institutions, um, looking into their systems and, and processes and how uh, their uh, statement, financial statements were uh, compliant. So uh, after that, uh, it was kind of like five and a half years ago, I joined King, started as a business analyst. And after some experience there in, in the player support uh, area, I, I joined uh, the technology organization as a product owner. Um, and then after that, I just joined as a product manager and then a product director in the platform team, just uh, looking after what I am doing today, which is the game economy domain. And basically we, we just provide games with their tools and, and technology that enable them to build and operate their, their economies. What's the agenda for today? Uh, so I'll, I'll basically be splitting the presentation in four parts. First, I'll just, you know, in case you're wondering why should you even care about this, I'll give you some arguments on why it is important to do this exercise. Uh, later on, I'll, uh, I'll go through some of the pitfalls that I myself uh, encountered when, when doing this exercise, but also while talking with some colleagues about it. Uh, and then after that, I'll just give some uh, high-level hints on how to go about this, doing this and what things to consider. And finally, I'll just give some examples of KPI that have worked for me, um, just trying to make the, the talk a bit uh, practical for you as well. Uh, before we go into the details, uh, I wanted to clarify some terms first. Uh, the first one is, what is a platform? Uh, this is something that is quite hyped uh, right now. There's a lot of talks about it, but basically you have the definition, a definition here from Evan Botcher, which I think it's, it's pretty good. Uh, so a digital platform is just a foundation uh, of self-service APIs, tools, services, knowledge, and support, which are arranged as a compelling internal product. Uh, and then autonomous delivery teams can make use of the platform to deliver product features at a higher pace with reduced coordination. So basically, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a team or, or, or a group of teams that just try to make the, the, the feature teams or, or the product teams in the company faster. Then the second term I wanted to clarify is another one that uh, is, uh, is quite uh, hype as well in the industry, which is what is platform as a product? Because I discovered what a platform was, uh, but uh, right now there's a lot of uh, literacy around how to deal with a platform as it was a product. Uh, and we have a quote here from Matthew Skelton um, uh, that basically highlights that you need to try treat your platform as a product the same way as you would with any other B2B or B2C product. Um, uh, and this is something that is really important. I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that later when I justify why you should even care about platform KPIs. But uh, if you aren't, uh, you know, my opinion is that everybody should be treating their platform as a product uh, because that yields a lot better results than if you're just looking at it as a, as a, as a technical solution. Uh, and then the final one, this, uh, at least in my experience, is a controversial one. Uh, but what is the difference between a metric and a KPI? Uh, and I think the, 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 the word that explains everything is the, is the K there, is the key. Uh, so basically, KPIs are your most important metrics in moving your product forward, uh, which means that all KPIs are metrics, but not all metrics are KPIs. I think we tend to confuse this a lot, uh, and we tend to confuse metrics with KPIs uh, and that's really confusing when you're trying to, to uh, sell the idea of defining KPIs or even reporting KPIs to your leadership, because uh, 
when you just have a bunch of metrics and, and you don't have a way of prioritizing which are the most important ones, then uh, there's too much confusion about it. Cool. Uh, then we go into why should you care? Um, I think the first thing, and I kind of briefly touch upon it, is that there's a big industry trend, and you see here some reference to the technology radar that if you haven't read it, I, I highly recommend it. But uh, in the volume 22, uh, which was from um, 2020, so it's, it's, it's a bit old, um, one of the key trends that they were highlighting was that you should be applying product management techniques to internal platforms. Uh, this is the same that Matthew Skelton was saying, but uh, if you actually read online, there's a lot of, as I said, literacy and, and, and articles around what are like the huge benefits of doing, uh, taking this type of approach. And as you know, defining metrics and being data-driven is a key thing in product management. So if you are trying to apply product management techniques to, to your product, uh, you should be uh, looking at some point into defining what are the key metrics uh, for it. So that's number one. Um, I think the second one, and I think this, this is a big one for a lot of people, is that you as a platform uh, product manager, you have a lot of customers. And if you don't have some sort of uh, quantitative way or, or quantitative data that kind of buys your decisions, you are sometimes drawn into situation of, you know, the loudest voice in the room uh, rules. Um, and this is just that, you know, whoever screams the loudest will, will get their feature prioritized. Obviously you as a product manager need to avoid that, but sometimes when you're talking with uh, high-end leadership around what things should be built in the platform, it's sometimes hard to argue against it if you don't have any evidence that that wouldn't be, a, a, um, a good approach and data is uh, often a very good uh, weapon uh, to sort of counter argue these, uh, th these things. Um, so that's what another of the arguments why I felt this is something that uh, is fairly useful. Um, the second one is that, and I think sometimes it, this is undervalued, but the quality of the decisions you're gonna make if you are sort of data informed and I'm sort of intentionally saying data informed because uh, it's very hard to be data driven when you are in a platform team because most of the data that you will have is uh, fairly discrete. But at least what I'm uh, what I'm uh, really sure of is that you can be at least data informed, which means that you can have a set of uh, metrics that at least advise the direction of where your decision should be going, uh, and I think that will you know, immediately improve the decision, the quality of the decisions that you make. Uh, and you will find sort of how people realize that the quality of your decisions are much better fairly soon, because not only you're going to make better decisions, you're going to justify them better because you're going to have backing evidence on why something is the, the right thing to build, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, another thing is that, uh, and this is something that, sometimes you don't expect. As I said, you usually don't have a lot of customers when you are a platform team, but uh, which means that you can talk with a lot of them and get a clear idea of what's sort of, what are the use cases that apply to a lot of the customers. But actually, if you actually define KPIs and you start tracking them and analyzing them, you realize a lot of things that you wouldn't have otherwise found out uh, with just qualitative uh, data, like doing interviews with your customers. There's a ton of things to unlock there uh, for you as a product manager. And it's a very valuable source of information that uh, we are leaving in the table if we're not looking at uh, doing this. Then I, I think, you know, uh, those are the key messages. There are more, but I just wanted to be brief around uh, kind of the, the most important things in my mind. Um, I think most of the things that I talked about before are reasons not only to define KPIs in platform products, but in any type of product in a B2B, B2C, like those things apply to, uh, to any type of product. And as I said, a lot of the trending is to start applying product management techniques to platform products and uh, defining KPIs is just one of the key things that we usually do in the craft. 
Uh, okay, so then, you know, hopefully I've convinced you to start doing this. Uh, and now I just want to warn you on some of the things or obstacles that I found al along the way. Um, I think one of the main things that I've found is that uh, I've really touched upon this before, but you have a very discrete number of customers sometimes when you're in a platform product. Uh, and a lot of the arguments against doing this exercise of the farming KPIs is people saying, you know, we could just talk to our customers and we would learn everything. We just need to ask them and they will tell us, uh, um, you know, which is the most important feature, how many times they use this or that. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. Uh, I think that's a great source of information. That's what we call qualitative data. But I think it, it is people often, as, as I said, underestimate the value of the, the information you can get from quantitative data. Because most of the uh, information you get from uh, your customers is biased by their own opinions. And sometimes they even say things uh, that might not be that true. Uh, they just think they're true. Uh, like for example, you, if, if you ask things like how many times do you use something, you know that's not a good uh, question to ask. But, and, and I think those questions are better answered by data than they are by asking your customers directly. The second one, and I think this is a big one, uh, is that usually uh, leadership uh, is interested about KPIs when you need to justify why you exist as, an, as, a, as a platform team. Uh, and the, the, the biggest pitfall is trying to attach some sort of ROI or money into your product. And I think you, this is a big pitfall because you, you will get into a sort of uh, rabbit hole uh, that is endless where you're trying to justify what is the revenue that the platform product is bringing. When in fact, platform products are just... Um, efficiency-based product. So you're just trying to make everybody faster. Uh, and by nature, you're not bringing any directly, you're not bringing any revenue uh, to the company. You're just making sure that everybody can bring in revenue uh, faster than they would if uh, you weren't there. So with that definition, it's going to be almost impossible for you to find KPIs that tell you sort of a dollar number uh, on your product. Um, I think another one is, you know, you've decided that you want to do, uh, you want to define KPIs, you think it's a great idea, uh, and then you start, you know, teaming up with some uh, UX designers, uh, engineers, what have you, uh, and then you start defining what are the KPIs that we want to have for our products. Uh, and often this conversation drags forever because everybody's sort of trying to uh, find the perfect KPIs and then there are arguments that, you know, how are we going to measure that KPI or, you know, could we have some other because I don't think that is that important. There's another one that is more important than this one, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then there is sort of an endless cycle on how to uh, define those KPIs that it's sort of a dead march because then people is going to get tired of it. And at the end, it's not going to happen. So this is one of the things that you need to uh, be wary you know, coming in uh, uh, and doing this exercise. Uh, and then sort of, you know, imagine you go through that pain of defining the KPIs, you know what you want to track, uh, you know how to track it. Uh, and then sometimes there's, there's the, or, or let's say always, you have the problem of, okay, now I need to prioritize instrumenting my products in, a, in order to collect this data uh, over feature development that I'm doing for my customers. And a lot of product managers have problems doing that uh, because um, in the end, there's always a happy customer you build a feature, whereas if you instrument your product, it's not that immediate to understand the value that you, you might have there. So because you're not able to justify why you're gonna prioritize that, you don't wanna do it because otherwise your leadership is gonna sort of, uh, uh, ask you why you're taking that decision or your customers will and, and you as a product manager are not prepared. So this is something that, uh, you know, if you really want to do this, you need to overcome this fear uh, and, and fight against not prioritizing this against other um, feature development. 
Uh, and finally, uh, I think another one that I've seen a lot in platform uh, products is that uh, a lot of the conversations around the KPIs are driven by engineers. Uh, and therefore, a lot of the KPIs that end up being defined are what I would call technical performance KPIs, like, you know, how uh, is, is the system stable, how many crashes, uh, what are the number of requests that we have, et cetera, et cetera, which, you know, I'll go through this later, that might be the right metrics for your product in some cases, but in some others, they're not. Uh, and they don't ma measure the value that you're providing to your customers. But it's usually the easiest thing to define, especially if you're working with engineers. So be wary of this because uh, if, if you go down the technical performance metrics route, uh, it might be that that will not give you any meaningful data for you uh, to advise your decisions as a product manager. Uh, another of the big problems that I've seen is that uh, sometimes people try to do this exercise without having any uh, analytical skills, uh, which means you don't have any background on analytics or there's nobody with background in analytics helping you do this exercise or you've never done this before. And the reality is that it's a hard exercise to do by yourself if you don't have any experience. Um, and and also, even if you don't have experience and you try to do it, if you don't have a way of validating this with somebody that knows how to go about doing this exercise, it will undermine your uh, authority with leadership or with other people in the team uh, in order to justify that you need to do it. Um, okay, so those were just a short list of examples of things that I've encountered myself that I think are important to uh, take into account going uh, into this exercise that, and can really either slow you down significantly or even put a stop to, to, to your effort to define your, your platform KPIs. Um, so let's just now go into, okay, what are my, my tips and tricks that, that work for me when, when I was doing this? And you will see that most of them are counterparts to the problems that I um, uh, said before. First is that if you don't see a lot of buy-in in the organization to do this, uh, I think you need to take time to build your case. And what do I mean by that? I mean, you need to be able to understand what you're going to do with it. Like, I don't know, maybe building some small MVP presentation on some metrics that you've scrapped together just by, I don't know, asking people or, or getting to some database yourself and querying it and so on. So just come up with an example and put it in front of leadership in order to showcase what you could be able to do if you had uh, this exercise done and you had uh, a strong KPIs. Um, that will usually give better, like land the, the benefit of doing this to your leadership, to your product team, uh, whoever it might be. So if you see this friction, don't just go and try to push your argument because it's not going to work. Try to build your case, um, build some small MVP that you, you put together and use it as a sort of RAM in order to, to get things going. Uh, the second one is, and I think this is really important, is that if you don't know how to do this or you don't have any analytics background or you don't have any sort of data analyst or, or somebody that can help you do this exercise, try to find it, you know, read a lot, you know, ping people in the community, try to get somebody to peer review what you're defining and, and so on, because that will massively increase the quality of the work that you're doing. Um, and in turn, it will sort of get to results a lot faster because otherwise you're going to have to learn all these skills at the same time as you're doing a hard exercise to do. And that might be uh, really troublesome for you. So just find the analytic skills somewhere if you don't have them. Um, and then sort of one thing that worked really well for me is that uh, if you don't know where to start in terms of what my KPIs are, and this applies to any product really, uh, start with the value proposition of the product. Uh, the important thing is to understand what 
is the value that you're providing to your customers? Like, what do they get with the product that I'm providing them uh, in a platform product? And then try to define the metrics around that. Um, so, and, and, and then you'll obviously need to sort of uh, tweak things, th things here and there because some things are really hard to measure and some others are not that hard. But uh, start always with the value that you're providing and try to put a measure on that. Uh, that will, you know, hopefully you've already ha done this exercise. But if you haven't, I think that will even be a very uh, useful thing to do, regardless of whether you're defining metrics, like just understanding the key things that your product provides to, the, to your customer is something that, you know, you as a product manager should do. But it's also a... a very good starting point in order to then define the metrics. Um, and I think, you know, this is one that probably applies to uh, organizations or platform organizations that are fairly big. But uh, basically when you're trying to do this exercise, um, then collecting all this data, like when you've defined all the KPIs, you, you're collecting all the data and then you need to build reports on top of it. This pipeline is not something easy to maintain. So while you're doing it, try to think, and if you have somebody helping you from the analytics side, obviously that would be a, a big plus uh, and you can discuss that with, with that person is try to think how you're then gonna scale up this effort because maintaining a pipeline of data collection and then data visualization is hard there's etls in the middle there's some reporting that you need to put together whatever that might be uh, so i think start thinking in the beginning on how you're gonna then after you've collected all of this how are you gonna be able to sustain and use this uh, in a in a scalable way which means you need to look into third parties or even you know if you have an analytics or data warehouse team you're going to start talking with them on how they could uh, be maintaining this uh, and so on. And that would mean political discussions as well. So make sure that you understand this uh, up front, because otherwise you're going to face a situation later on where you've done a lot of work, but then you can't yield the results because you don't have the manpower to maintain uh, this pipeline. Cool. Uh, and I think you know, related to the sort of endless discussion around defining KPIs, uh, I think sort of the, the best advice that I can give there and that has worked for me is just get going, start somewhere, you know, define your value proposition, try to define some metrics around it and don't overthink it. Um, just have something that you have relative agreement with your, your product team uh, and then start measuring that. Because most likely, like, you're never going to find the perfect KPI from the get-go. Most likely, you will, uh, and, and even worse, how to measure those KPIs is probably going to require a lot of iterations. So just get something going, put some instrumentation in the product, uh, and then try to collect the data and analyze it and see what you get. And most likely, you will need to iterate and iterate and iterate. This is the typical approach we take with products. And it applies in the same way to, to analytics and, and platform KPIs. Uh, you're not gonna be perfect in the, in, the, in the beginning. So just embrace that thought and just make sure that, that you put the, uh, that you get things going uh, quickly. I think another thing that usually uh, people is afraid uh, when they're defining is that, you know, we need to find the perfect KPIs that, uh, you know, will be sustained long-term. And the reality is that KPIs are linked to your product strategy. So, uh, and, and product strategies change over time, which means that, you, you know, obviously they don't change every day or every month, but uh, you're trying to achieve something. And once you achieve it, then you need to pivot and define what is the next thing that I'm going to be tackling uh, from my strategy. And that might mean that you need to change the KPIs that you've defined. Uh, and, but that is completely fine. So I think you need to make sure you understand that first, you, if you don't have a product strategy, you probably should have one, but uh, you should be linking your value proposition and your KPIs to your product strategy. And then make sure you understand that at some point those might change and it's fine. There is no problem on, on, on changing KPIs because maybe you pivot you know, the, the, the strategy that you are after or you, you found out that they're not right, as we said before, 
And I think that's completely fine. There is nothing wrong with defining KPIs along the way. Um, don't sort of be afraid that people is just gonna not trust you. Uh, I think people understand that in the beginning, you know, you need to go through an iteration process. And if you communicate that you're changing strategy, it's a given that then your KPIs uh, most likely will change as well. Uh, another one, and this is really important uh, to sort of back up and build your um, confidence or the confidence of uh, both your product team and your leadership to, to yourself as a product manager is you've justified that you want to define KPIs and you need to put an investment to do so. After you have everything set up, live up to your work, use that uh, thing like you're the customer this is sort of the dream of every uh, product manager you're the customer of what you're building so make sure that you use it you sort of prioritize it for a reason so once you have it make sure you put the time to look into those uh, metrics make sure you do analysis and deep dives and uh, obviously if you have a, an analytics team they can do it for you but make sure that you leverage all that effort and all that data in order to advise your decisions, put them in presentations uh, around, you know, how things are going around the products, uh, use it in product discovery to justify what the best solution might be based on previous usage, uh, use it to even justify whether an investment was, was good. Uh, so if you, if you actually try to solve a problem, make sure that you have the right metrics defined that you can then look in the end to justify that that was a good decision and put that into your uh, sort of uh, standard processes. And then, and this is a tough one uh, because it's easy, easier said than done, but try to avoid uh, putting a lot of energy over measuring the revenue contribution of your platform team. It's really hard and I've not seen any case where this is successful. Um, so try to manage, if, if it's your leadership that is doing this, try to manage this up, upwards uh, and try to spend the least amount of time possible because these type of uh, mindsets also drive you towards, um, you know, how would we uh, calculate this? And usually they tend to lead towards lagging indicators or vanity metrics because the reality is that there is no good way to measure this. So you, you find a buy uh, uh, as a somewhat scrappy solution in order to measure it. And reality is that that's not going to give you enough information. Or if it is, it's going to be too late because it's a, it's a lagging indicator that happens very long time after you've delivered or not delivered the value to your customer. So just be aware of this. Okay, uh, finally, uh, some examples. Um, again, I don't want this to become sort of the, the the, the, the list of metrics that you need to find in a platform, but these are examples that have worked for me. So just thought that I would share them. The first one is initially when you're building a product, uh, a platform product, you need, you want your customers to adopt it. So I think adoption metrics are really uh, a good one in the beginning. And this is usually kind of your first step uh, when you're building something new is to make sure that everybody uses it uh, or adopts it. So, you know, which customers are using your product, um, it's important when you're launching it specifically. Uh, however, there's some cases where like your customers are forced to use your product, which means that these adoption metrics will not be that, that useful in those cases. Second, uh, I, I think I, I usually call these uh, use case coverage or, or variation metrics. And what I mean by this is, you know, for how many different things are your customers using your product? Uh, are they just using it for one uh, niche thing uh, in the sort of set of use cases that they have? Uh, is it something that is covering a lot of uh, repeatable use cases across a lot of, of your customers? Um, uh, and I think that's really a, a, a metric that is really helpful when you're trying to understand whether your product is solving highly repeatable problems uh, and it's sort of very flexible uh, in the sense that customers can use it for a lot of things. Um, so I, I think this is, uh, this is a, a good one where, uh, you know, your product is something like the value proposition of your product is to be flexible and be able to be used in, the, in a lot of different scenarios. 
it's also good to understand sort of the penetration of your product across your customers, like how deep into their uh, ways of working is your technology, um, because that's, that speaks to the stickiness uh, of the product as well. A third one is that sometimes platform products, one of the key uh, attributes is to uh, be extensible. Um, so extensibility metrics, like if you have ways to extend the, the, your product, it's, it's actually sometimes very useful to measure how many extensions your customers are, are, are putting in place. Um, uh, and I think this is another one that sometimes, depending on the value proposition of your product, can be interesting. Uh, and this is, I sort of <laughs> argued against uh, technical performance metrics, but sometimes the key value proposition of a pl platform product is to just work, uh, be scalable, you know, be stable and so on. So in those cases, actually the KPIs are, you know, the, the good KPIs are technical performance metrics, you know, uptime, numbers, incidents, response times, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think, you know, in some cases they are the right metrics. So don't take me wrong on the, on the previous argument that they said. And then uh, finally, uh, another one, and this is a tricky one, but uh, when you're trying, when your product is fairly mature, um, you sometimes want to optimize, you know, how much time am I saving for my customers? So what I would call workflow metrics are in those cases really useful because they can be the right drivers for you to understand whether you're making an impact on your customer. So like what, what's the time to do X task uh, and so on. Uh, the, the thing with those metrics is that sometimes it's very hard to measure the time it takes. So uh, in my case, it's been sometimes useful to flip it around and just calculate how many times they are doing that task uh, instead of measuring how long it takes to do it. Um, that has an assumption, which is that, you know, the faster you make, uh, the easier you make the task for them to do, then they will be doing more of them, which might not be the case because sometimes they are just not going to do more of that task. They're going to put that time that you're saving them into some other task. But, you know, you need to be aware of these situations. And if you, uh, if you are in the right uh, context, it might be a good one to measure. Cool. Uh, that was it for me. Uh, I hope it was uh, helpful. Um, as I said, really excited to be able to share this with the community. And if you have any questions, just make sure you, you shoot them my way and I'll, I'll try to give you uh, any hints uh, if I can. Take care. Bye-bye.